Hey, this is Tim here. I hope you're keeping well. Um, I wanted to show you a project that I've been working on. Uh, I have a friend, Peter, and he makes, uh, he's among other things, he makes guitars. And uh, he has a CNC machine, and uh, he wanted me to um, somehow uh, machine this uh, guitar neck out of a 2x6. So um, that's something I've never done before, and uh, it's kind of interesting. So um, he's he's cool with me uh, sharing this video, and uh, so that's what I'm going to try and do. So um, the what I'm going to try and do is machine this using a CNC. We're going to create some tool paths using something called Fusion 360. So um, this is the first step. So if somebody wants you to model or somebody wants you to machine something up using a CAM software you need to model the part up using a CAD software. Now, it would have taken me, excuse me, it would have taken me hours, if not days, to, to model up this guitar neck from scratch. So what do we do? We You go to GrabCAD or 3D Content Central or an online depository of CAD models, do a search. I did a search on um, guitar neck and somebody modeled up this beautiful, um, I think it's a Stratocaster or a Telecaster. I'm not really sure, but the, the the headstock was a little bit different. What am I looking for when I'm when I'm looking for a model to essentially rip off? I'm looking for something a that's accurate, b that has a nice feature tree. There were some models that had um, that were based on surfaces. My advice is to stay away from those. For, even for me, that's a little bit hairy. To kind of modify i'm just looking for basic extrudes and cuts and holes like this this should you should be able to model this with simple extrusions and simple cuts so um i found this on grabcad um i needed to modify the original sketch i took a photograph of the new headstock and did some splines and um so what what, what else do you want to do you want to remove features that are not needed so I spoke to Peter, asked him what features were not needed and delete them. Keep your feature tree as simple as possible. So we, we start off with that. We start taking some cuts, add, add the holes. Um, the, what are these called? These things are frets, fret, grooves maybe. We add our fillets. So things you want to be, things I didn't know about guitars, even though I play one, uh, I didn't know this was curved. So this is... This is a nine and if I, let's see if I can find the sketch. It's a nine and a half inch radius. Okay. So that's curved. You want to be aware of that. Um, you have some, uh, uh, we, you have a cutout here. Uh, we have a groove here, which is, I didn't know this was curved either. Now, I, I honestly, I don't know why that's curved, but a, a guitar, Peter would probably explain that to me. Um, what is that for? That's for um, ah, screw it. That's for something called a truss. I think it's called a truss rod that goes through it. So Peter is going to have to drill a hole in this. So there's my model. I modeled it in SolidWorks, which well, I modeled it. I, I modified an existing model that I found in SolidWorks. I I got my dial calipers out, checked everything. I'm pretty happy with this model. I'm going to save it. And we're going to import into Fusion 360. Why Fusion 360? Honestly, um, Fusion 360, from what I've seen, has a beautiful um, import. When I say this, this import, it's free, but it has a beautiful CAM modeling software. So we can we can generate tool paths that we can export G code to a CNC. So um, I'm going to I'm going to work. We're, we're going to model this out. Model. We're going to we're going to cut it out of a piece of two by six that I'm going to pick up at Home Depot first and foremost. If Peter's happy with that, then he'll probably get a nice piece of maple. Honestly, I have no idea what he's going to make it out of, but if I can get this out of a two by six, I'm going to be happy with that. So the the next step will be bringing this into Fusion 360. Now, Fusion 360 is free. You should have no trouble downloading it, and uh, it's free to hobbyists and educators and Anyone that's making less than a hundred thousand, which is a mo which is in fairness the most of us. So, I'll show you the next step in a bit. Hey, I'm back. Um, so I'm, I'm going to keep on plugging away with this video. Uh, it's been a few days since um, 
I've been working on this guitar neck. Um, I, ha I have played around with Fusion 360 a little bit, and I know a little bit more about it now. But um, this, I, I'm after modeling a 2x6 and uh, a load of things called tabs. And what these tabs do is they, as this gets machined out, uh, these tabs hold the guitar in place. And then you have to take like a jigsaw or um, a bandsaw and cut them out. Um, so this is the, the model of the actual stock and all of the, the tabs already there. Um, so I'm saving this as a step file. And uh, I'm going to bring it in. So I have Peter Neck Revision B dot step. Um, so let me just show you how I actually model this. It might help. So I have the guitar neck. What did I do there? I added the the two by two by six. I added my um, tabs there, and then more tabs there, and then here. So. Um, e if you know anything about Fusion or you know anything about Mastercam or one of these cam packages, there is a button on there to add tabs, but not. I couldn't find one when I was doing something called Adaptive Clearing, which I'll talk about later. So I had to I had, actually had to model in these tabs. So that's it. I'll save this, and uh, let's open up Fusion 360. So what do I do? We're going to go um, New Design. Now let's just do this new design. Okay, what am I doing wrong here? Model. Okay. Let's just do a new design from file then. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I can see now the other thing, Peter, um, when you're trying to use Fusion 360, I'm holding down that middle mouse button, and I can rotate this. Now that only works when you come into here and you go into Preferences, and it's uh, Pan, Zoom, Orbit, Shortcut, SolarWorks. So what it does is it acts just like SolarWorks does in terms of zooming out, back, and front. So if you use another program, you might want to you might want to um, change that there. So um, one thing I found is is I'm looking at X and I'm looking at Y and Z, so I need to rotate this a little bit. So how do I, um, mod, can I rotate this? Move, copy. There we go. Ninety degrees there and ninety degrees there. Lovely. Um, why is that? You'll see when we get into um, you'll see when we get into um, so what that is a sculpt about model. Okay, so when we get into cam, it will make more sense. So I'm going to click on cam. All right, and this was all in inches, wasn't it? I think it was in inches. So I'm going to change this guy to be in inches. And where did we say, where's our X, Y, and Z, or our zero? So forgive me, um, let's go setups. Okay, let's do this. General toolpath, setup sheet, no. No, that's not it. Right, what am I doing wrong here? Let me just close these down. I'm going to save this. I'm going to call this Peter Neck Revision B. Okay. Now, if I go into setup, there we are, new setup. And we want milling, stock, stock side offset. I just want this to be zero, relative side, fixed size box. From solid, will that work? No. Fixed size box, five by five by one point five by thirty, and that's it. But we want to move this guy here. Can I just click here? There we go. So that's my zero x, y, and z. But we can change that at any time. There's no worry. 
And I'm going to go OK. Can I go to Post Process? That's fine too. OK. I'm going to pause this, um, Peter. I'm going to find. No, I'll just keep going for a second. So there's that. Uh, I'm trying to think here aloud. We said we would start with this first. So let's. Let's move this around. No, so I'm going to have to change all this. Right, if I want to, can I right click here and go edit? And can I change this X, Y, and Z if I click here? And can I change that X? No. How do I flip that? Model orientation. Select Z, select X and Y axis. So X axis we'll say is this guy. Now can I flip it? Oh look at that. Y axis is going to be this guy. Can I flip it? Is that right? X, Y and Z. I want to select the I need to flip the Z though. Um flip Z axis. That'll work. And then what I need to do is I need to click, that's okay orientation that's fine select coordinate system origin um, selected point okay that'll do the job now this is okay that's not ideal is because this is different now okay but there's my x y and z right um okay now i'm just going to save this now what's the next thing i want to do um let's do uh, a simple operation let's do a pocket and let's get these six holes done so i go into uh, 2d pocket and i'll get a tool i will get a new tool and i'm gonna go uh, flat end mill and we'll say uh, no, from what I understand with, um, but I, I was playing on a CNC machine at the Makerspace. None of this really matters, but I'm going to just, no, don't mess with that. Come on now. Um, flute length, we'll say 0.75. And then we'll say our diameter is 0.25. Shaft diameter is 0.25. Okay. All right. So let's go okay with that. And our cutting feed rate, I was using I was using 60 inches a minute. So that's one inch a second. Let's leave it as 50. And let's leave the rest of it alone. We're not going to have any coolant. Um, and these are the geometry, right? I'm going to click this, 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 and this. All right. Um, and these are the heights. You can always change these retract heights. I feel it gets better if this is a little bit high because I was hitting my clamps last time. So I'm going to make that a bit bigger. Retract height, clearance height, retract, feed height, top height. Okay, let's just leave that for a second. Um, these heights are important. When you actually run the CNC, they will make a lot more sense. If you're Sometimes, like I'll give you an example, I'm going to use four clamps here. And sometimes when the CNC goes back to its home position, it can run very, very close to the deck or the top of the stock. And sometimes you want that to be a little bit higher. What you'll do is you'll cut right through your plastic or your uh, clamp. But you'll, you'll learn that pretty quickly. So let's go into passes. And I want no radial stock. Let's leave this to be zero. Multiple depths. And how deep do we want to go here for a second? Tolerance, smoothing. Let's just go back here to depth, heights. Bottom height is going to be, let's go the model bottom. Oh, lovely. Now you need to make sure you have, um, you need to make sure you have a spoil board underneath this, or if you mill all the way down to the bottom there, it's going to cut your, um, your your uh, what the hell is it called your table or your platform which you don't want 
so um, we have a spoil board under there I'm gonna go into um, maximum roughing I'm just gonna make this point one for a second and then I'm gonna go okay I think that's everything and it doesn't like it why I can click on this warning here so the issue is with the ramping something called ramping constraints and this is a quarter inch and I think these guys holds about three eighths and there isn't enough room for it to ramp like it's supposed to so I'm going to do something called plunging and you can do plunging with wood but I don't think that would be a good idea with metal so I'm going to come in here and passes linking ramp this is the issue right here now I don't know enough about it helical ramp diameter I'm going to try and put that into plunge plunge and I know that's going to work there it goes beautiful okay that looks good okay what I can do is I can right click on this and I can go machining time and how long is that two minutes happy days right what's next um, I'm going to do a uh, a pocket is that what I want or a face and I'm going to face out this face and I'm going to face out this face and let's let's leave it at that so I'm going to go 2d face and let's be careful here um, geometry oh beautiful I can handle that is that going to be okay Ali, what are you doing? You alright, buddy? Good lad. And then I'm going to come over here. Happy days. Uh, heights. Now let me have a look. Retract. Height. Bottom. If I go retract height, what's going on here? Clearance size. Bottom, bottom height, no. Is, is selected contours. Will that work? I think we can find out in a second. Feed, top, bottom, selected contours. Can I select you? Will that work? Invalid reference. How about that? Bottom reference. Okay. Now if I come over here, pass. Step over. I like this to be small. Let's make this, make this point one. Um, if you make this too big, um, you're going to have tiny little lines. You want the actual, like a lawnmower. It's kind of like a lawnmower. Um, if you mow the entire width of the motor each time, um, sometimes it's better to do, like, when you when you go first with the lawnmower, the second time you go over it, you just go over half of the new grass and half the lawnmower is in the same. That probably makes no sense. Let's see, does it work anyway? Multiple depths. Again, let's make this 0.05. We'll pick the same tool. Oh god, that's hardcore. Um, that step over is a little much, isn't it? No. I'm looking at the size of that tool there. Um, it seems like a lot. So let's right click on this and I'm going to go machining time. 36 minutes, too much. So, what can we do? We have one, two, three, four. Um, I feel like I can increase the. Um, let's have a look. I can increase the multiple depths. Let's make that uh, 0 0.075. Alright, our step over. Let's make this 0.15. Let's go, okay. All right, let's right click machining time 15 minutes. It seems like a lot for what I'm trying to do um, That looks pretty good. What we can do here is oh yeah, let me, I can click here and click here. I can right click simulate Can I turn off the stock? I just want the stock on now if I press play You can see what it's doing it, it cuts it out I wonder if that the speed. We can increase the speed here a little bit.
So that's a face. And it's going to come down. That's good. So these are 2D operations I'm doing. Um, 2D. Um, okay. Good for pockets, holes. You can do an awful lot of damage with 2D operations. All right. Um, what's the next thing? The next thing I feel like I want to do um, a contour. All right, and I'm gonna I'm gonna contour out all of this. Should I do that first? No, I'm gonna machine um, all of these three D curves. Why am I doing that instead of the contour? Because I want to machine I want to machine that. I think there's gonna be less vibration. Um, so what am I going to do? 3D. And what I've used here is I've, I've, I seem to like adaptive clearing. First, it's a roughing strategy available for clearing large quantities of material effectively. So we'll use that. And we're going to use the same tool. Same cutting feed rate. Um, stock contours. Now, let's see how this goes. Can I click... No, what about heights? Stock contours. Can I select these? Why can I? Machining boundary selection. Bounding box. I remember this. Yeah. Um. This. This. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then there's going to be heights. Okay. I got this. Um, the boundary, we're going to have to give it the full boundary. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to draw something on here. So let's go back for a second. Um, I, this will make sense. Give me one second, okay? I'm going to draw a sketch in on here. And we'll get, come on now, a rectangle. We should start up here. Bring it all the way up. To there. That will do. Let's bring it out a bit. There we go. So we have... That's going to be our machining boundary. I'm going to get... I'm going to go back to cam. And don't worry about this. I can just go generate to a path. Generate to a path. I'm going to go 3D. And... Let's go to geometry, stock selections, machining boundary is going to be selection, and it's going to be this rect rectangle, tool containment, tool inside boundary, I feel like, outside, we'll just go with center for the time being, stock contours, model, Let, we're just, I'm just going to leave this for a second, I'm going to go heights, bottom heights I'm gonna go with model bottom that's okay passes radial stock to leave I'm going to do something called an adapt adaptive clearing to rough all this out and then I'm going to do something called a parallel finishing operation with a much smaller um, a ball end mill so so hopefully you're not too confused so let's go okay and let's see what happens Look at that, beautiful. It's going to be complicated. Is that is okay. Interesting. Mm. Okay, so let's. So how do I see what's going on here? So it goes down a little bit. Um, okay. Should I've made this gap bigger? Um, okay. Um, now let's see how long this thing is going to take half an hour not too bad um okay so 
I wish I could turn, if I could turn this off, this, this bad boy. Oh, look at this. Lovely, lovely. I'm going to go one, I'm holding down the shift key when I select all of those. And I'm going to right click and go simulate. And we'll turn off the tool paths because it's a bit crazy. And we'll turn on, no, should we go, we do transparent. I'm going to press play. Bear with me for a sec, just checking my phone here. Alright. I'm telling you, I'm a, I'm a SolidWorks guy, but honestly, I really like Fusion 360. Um, it, it, for free, I don't know, you, you can't beat it. Um, like, I'll be honest with you, I can't do this in SolidWorks. So, um, you know, I, I do like this program. I'm not a traitor. Can I speed this up a little bit? Look at clearing it, beautiful. That's the adaptive clearing now. Lovely, beautiful. Right, so I'm a little bit concerned it's not going in, it's not getting in there very well, as deep as it should. Hmm. So, um, anyway, that's pretty good. Let's turn this back on. Um, why isn't it getting in there with those vertical ones, that more that vertical? Um, let's go back in here, and is it contour? This is the best strategy for finishing steep walls. I'm going to try this and see how this does. I'm going to show you a little trick now that I learned um, at the maker space. I'm going to keep the same tool. The cutting feed rate, I'm going to leave this at 50. Um, the geometry, uh, machining boundary selection. Uh, let's, let's leave that the way that is. Rest machining. What this does is... It, it won't cut the material that has already been cut in the previous operation. So that's a good thing. I don't want to. I don't want to have to generate two paths and cut all of this out again. So I don't know. Maybe maybe that isn't. Let's let's see. I want to be careful there. Tool or orientation passes. All right. Stock to leave. Well, let's go. Okay. Oh yeah, God, that is beautiful. I'm giving up my day job as a SolarWorks guy, and I'm turret machining. It's much more fun. I like that. Um, and what it does is it's actually staying away from these um these tabs, so that's pretty good. Um, what else? How long does that take? Oh shit, thirty-eight minutes. Hmm. What can I do to edit that? Can I do anything with that? That's the speed. Heights. Model bottom passes. Maximum step down. Tolerance. Flat area detection. Stock to leave. That's just, I think that's as good as I'm going to get. Linking. You know, if anyone has more experience at this than me, and they can tell in the comments a way to improve these tool parts, I'm all ears. Um, okay. The next thing I want to do is the, co the contour. Um, so, no, not the contour, a 2D contour. And what's that going to do is it's going to cut out all of this. So, um... Alex is talking to me. Or a contour selection. Alexa, shut up. Sorry. Um, 
contour selection. All right. Just bear with me, I'm thinking here. 2D contour. All right. Geometry selection, contour selection. Now I did this a nice easy way. Now what happens? Can I see this is I don't know how well this is gonna work. It's not gonna work very well. Yeah, this is gonna be a really pain. Alright, I'm gonna have to pause this video and figure this out. And I'll get back to you.